In this video, you are going to learn how to create a digitally painted sphere in Photoshop. And we are creating this sphere from scratch, meaning we're using the tools, but we are not tracing. We're not going to Google images. We're actually going to build this sphere from scratch. It's going to show you that you can um, do some fairly basic drawing um, with some pretty impressive results, even if you feel like you're not very good at drawing. So this is the example of what we're going to create. You'll see the sphere has a color. It has has a shadow. It's got kind of the mid-tones in between. So those are the, the shadows in between. And then we have our uh, highlight, which is the bright spot here. We also have our cast shadow on the bottom, and I'll show you how to do that um, and blur it as well. So we always like to start with a reference when we're looking at a sphere. Um, you can also see there's the reflected highlight, which I don't have in that example, but I can show you how to do that later in the video. Um, so feel free to use references just to kind of compare your sphere to other spheres. Our goal is to make a circle look more 3D. We want it to look as 3D as possible using those basic Photoshop skills. Now, all of the requirements will be on Google Classroom here, so feel free to um, just check that to make sure your requirements are met. Um, otherwise, feel free to follow along with this video. Okay. Photoshop, go ahead and open that. We're going to go to create new or file new. And from here, we want to set up as pixels. We're going to say 2000 pixels wide, and then we'll say 1400 pixels high. Resolution, I like to keep at 300, but if you keep it at 72, that's not the end of the world. It's just a lower quality. So now I'm gonna say create, and here's my blank canvas. I'm gonna move my face up a little bit just so you can see my layers here. Now we need to start with the circle and the circle often is hiding underneath our rectangle tool. So we're gonna right click on that tool, that shape tool, and we're gonna to go to ellipse. Ellipse is circle. So click on ellipse. Now, as you click and drag, you'll notice it makes more of an oval or you know, ellipse shape. Um, it's hard to make a perfectly sized uh, circle. So if you're trying to make a circle and it's not working, um, go ahead and hold down shift on the keyboard. So shift and kind of start up here or over here and then click and drag. And as I'm holding shift, it creates that perfect circle. You can even tell by the measurements there next to my mouse. Um, you can see it's the same number. Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and let go. And now I have a perfect circle right there ready to work with. Um, now I'm also going to uh, play around with the color here. So since this is a shape layer, it says ellipse, and then there's this little like shape icon there. Um, this is ready to um, be edited if I want to. So I can fill this with any color. I just go up here to fill and feel free to choose any color. You do have to choose a color, so you can't just keep it black and white. Um, it does need to be a color other than black or white. So any of these colors works. It's helpful if you stay away from really dark colors because that can be really hard to tell where your shadow is. So kind of in the middle here, up here should be fine. Um, we just definitely want a color. So I'm gonna go and do a, maybe kind of a teal blue color. Okay, don't have stroke turned on. So if you do have that turned on, go in here and turn that stroke off. We don't want an outline around the outside of our circle. All right, next step is we are going to rasterize this. So rasterizing means we're gonna turn it into a normal rasterized layer. It won't be vector-based anymore. We're gonna right click and say rasterize layer. And from here, we can't go and edit that shape now. That shape is, doesn't matter how many times we click this, we're not gonna be able to change that color because it's no longer a shape layer. Um, it's just a basic layer. So we've rasterized a layer. The reason why we did that is because otherwise we won't be able to paint on top of it So or select it. So now I'm going to do a new layer and we're going to call this shadows. This is my shadows layer. I'm going to go back to ellipse one, which is just the circle, and I'm going to find my magic wand tool. Right click on object selection, if that's what's selected, and we're going to find magic wand. Okay, that's where you're going to find that magic wand. Now this is the part that a lot of students forget the magic wand part, you want to just go ahead and click on the circle. It needs to just select the circle. It's going to do the dancing ants around the outside of that circle. A lot of students miss that part. And then they're trying to figure out why their shadow isn't looking right. And chances are it's because they forgot to select it. Um, so make sure you're on the ellipse layer and you click there. Um, other things students do is they'll say, oh, well, darn it, I click it, but it's just selecting the square. It's just selecting the rectangle or the outside edge of your canvas. It just means you weren't on the right layer. So click on ellipse and then click on the circle so it selects that circle, okay? Now, once I have that circle selected, then I'm actually gonna go ahead and select the shadows layer. So this is the layer where we're going to paint in our shadow. 
I'm going to go in and grab my brush. So brush tools right here. Again, if you don't see it, you can right click and find it. So brush tool. And then right up here, you can change the size. Now, believe it or not, we're actually going to go to a pretty big size. I recommend doing like 900, maybe even a thousand. And you can drag this up or you can type it in. So I could just say a thousand here to type it in. And we're going to set hardness to 0%. Very important. Make sure you set that as 0%. Now, if I'm looking at that reference, I'm going to pull up my reference image again. There we go. All right. Whoop, there we go. Okay. So what we're looking at is we're looking at making our shadow kind of curve along that edge, almost like a half moon. Think of like a half moon shape. That's what we're trying to do with our brush. We're trying to curve it along that edge. So I have my brush ready to go. I have my selection on, this looks good. I'm on my shadows layer. Now I just need to change the color to black. So I'm gonna double click on this white box and we'll select black. Now I can basically go in and add my shadow. I'm gonna do control Z on that. Now the, the other issue that I see a lot of students having is they do something like this. They forget to curve their shadow. And the problem with that is it doesn't make it look like the sphere is actually realistic. It doesn't look 3D. Right? It just looks like one side of the ball um, has a shadow and the other side doesn't. So we want to curve that. Now, since this brush is so large, what I like to do is go right on the edge of that sphere. And I just kind of sometimes will click along as I go along. You don't want to go too far over the sphere. And because we have that selection on, it's only going to put, I'm going to zoom out just so I can get the bottom there. It's only going to put the shadow just the edge of that shadow in. So it's really good at doing that. And I'm just gonna kind of follow along that edge again and just do kind of a little bit at a time, kind of building it up. Now you'll notice I go even up here a little bit, that's good, and a little bit over here, but I'm not gonna go over here. Over here is where my highlight's going to be. Now you could technically reverse this. So if you want to make the highlight over here, you could just do you know the shadow on this side. But basically you want the shadow on one side and then the other side, you'll have your highlight. Now, looking at this, I could even go a step further. I think I could make this go a little bit higher. I'm going to try 1400. We'll see how that looks. That's better. The higher your brush, the better gradient you're going to get. So I could even go, if I go up to like 2000, let's see if that would work too. It actually probably isn't too bad. So again, I'm off to the side. I'm not right on top. If I'm right on top of it, it's just going to do the whole thing. So control Z on that. But if I go right on the edge here, see it's kind of adding that nice gradation. It's actually looking pretty good not too shabby. Look at that. All right, I'm gonna just kind of step back. Sometimes it helps to kind of go back a little bit, make sure it's not too off. You want it to be nice and rounded. Just a very gentle shadow. So not too much black, but not too much of the color showing through too. That's pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's, it's definitely not bad. Okay, so I'd say that's pretty good. Now we did that on the shadows layer. If I turn off this ellipse layer, you can see, I can kind of see it better without the color. That looks pretty good. I like it. Okay, now I'm gonna do my highlight. Now the highlight, I'm actually gonna drop this down a little bit. Let's see, I'll probably do about, just a little bigger than that. Maybe let's go to about, let's do 600. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, 600 will be good. And here we have to change the color. So black is not gonna work. We need to do white. So double click on your color, change that to white. And then go ahead and you'll want to do the, the circle about right here. You don't want it too far. You don't want it over the edge. You want it right about there. And that's going to give it that pop of light to make it look like the light is shining off of this shining um, sphere. So this looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go to select, deselect, or you can do it control D on the keyboard and that will deselect. The reason why we want to do that is because now we need to do other stuff. We're not going to just, um, you know, just do the background or, you know, whatever, or we're not going to just do the shadows anymore. So now we need to do the background. We also need to do the cast shadow. So let's do the cast shadow next. Let's grab the ellipse tool again. So that's a circle tool. I'm going to click and drag. We're going to make a nice little ellipse shape here about that big. Now, theoretically, you could have this in different places. I've even had students who make it look like it's floating. Um, so you can put the shadow underneath if you want to or off to the side. This is just kind of the traditional way to do it. I'm gonna fill it with black, make sure it's black, make sure there's no stroke. Okay, so technically you could leave it like this, but it doesn't look very realistic. We're going to want to add a blur to this. So I'm going to right click on that layer and rasterize it. So again, rasterizing the layer. I'm also going to drag this down so it's below my ellipse just because I feel like that works a little better. Um, I can call this cast shadow. I'll just name it cast shadow right now. 
Now I'm going to apply a filter. So we're going to go up here to the top, filter, and then blur. And then this Gaussian or Gaussian blur is the one I like to use. There's other types of blurs, but Gaussian blur is the one I like to do. Go to that blur. And then from here, you can adjust how blurry it is. You don't want to go all the way to the right, otherwise it's going to disappear. But somewhere like around here is pretty good. So it gives you a nice fuzzy looking shadow that's looking pretty good. You can also, you know, go a little lower, but I like it to be nice and fuzzy. Make it look like it's an actual shadow because shadows are generally fuzzy on the edges. I click OK. Awesome. Looks really good. The very last thing that I'm going to do is add a background. And then I'll also show you how to do that reflected light just to make it look even more um, realistic. So I'm going to go to my background now. There's two options for this. You can add a solid color background and I could just go in and choose any color here and just fill it in with the paint bucket. That would be one option. The other option is if I right click on that paint bucket tool and go to gradient, I could do a gradient instead. So if clicking and dragging, I could do a gradient that goes across um, the whole background basically. So a few ways to approach it. It's totally up to you. Matter of preference doesn't matter to me. Um, have some fun with it. If you want to play around with gradients, you certainly can. They're all kind of here. There's different presets you can play around with. Pick one that you think is a lot of fun. I don't know. All right. So last but not least, we're going to do uh, reflected light. I'm going to change the background here because I just feel like that's a little too bright. That's better. Okay. So reflected light, what we'll want to do is actually use that magic wand tool again. I'm going to click on that wand tool. Make sure you're on the ellipse layer. Um, remember your shadows, that's all on this one layer. So that's separate. It actually looks pretty cool without that colorful sphere underneath. But we're going to click on ellipse tool. I'm going to click on the circle. And then I'm going to grab that brush again. And this time we'll make sure it's just a little bit smaller. Let's do like seven, actually let's do 800. Let's see how 800 does. And for the reflected light, you'll either do the color of your background a little bit just to show like that it's on the surface, or you could also even do white. So let's try the color of the background. I'm going to grab my eyedropper tool, I'll go to my background layer, and I'll just choose, let's go to the lighter one, this kind of like cream color. And then I'm going to go back and actually make, I can do a new layer for this. So instead of shadows, I'll just do a new layer on top of this. And we'll call this reflected light. Now this is like a bonus, right? This is if you're trying really hard and you're trying to do like a really nice job. Um, you are not required to do the reflected light, but it is just kind of a nice thing to know. Now the reflected light basically just means that the light reflecting off of the surface of the table would reflect onto where the shadows is. So it might seem kind of funny, but that is actually something that happens, especially with something really shiny. So if this ball is really shiny, it would have just a tiny little bit of reflection. And I think I'm actually going to make this smaller. Let's go to 500. It's going to do a little bit. And you only want a tiny, tiny bit. So see, I'm just going right on that edge just ever so slightly, just a little bit. And if you really look at it, it would be like, oh, wow, that really does look like it's shining. Now, if the color of the background isn't looking very good, like if it just doesn't look very natural, and that happens depending on the color you chose, you can try doing white and see if white gets you just a little better. And that's not too bad either. Pretty good. So just like that, it almost looks like a glass marble. Oh, dear. Okay. Oh. Okay, <laughs> notifications just going over. All right, so now from here, I'm gonna do Control D. We're gonna deselect. Looking at it, it looks really good. I think I've met the expectations. This is what I'm looking for. Then we need to save it. So we're going to do File, Export, and then Quick Export as PNG. And here's where you can choose to save it wherever you want. Um, I recommend saving it in a graphic design folder. Don't just save it to the cloud, save it on the actual computer. I'm gonna call it Sphere quick save. And then that's where you're going to go and upload this to Google Classroom just to prove that yes, you could indeed create a sphere from scratch just using some basic tools in Photoshop. A lot of future assignments that we do in this class and in graphic design too use these skills that you're learning. So we'll be using the brush tool, the shape tool, um, gradient and paint bucket and filters. And it's just nice to know um, how to do these things and know that you don't have to be an amazing realistic drawer um, to do cool stuff like this. So once you finish it, just make sure you upload it and then you are all done.